Hi, in this video I will explain some basic uh, working principles of mm, fluid mechanics of, of hydraulic systems. I primarily mean uh, hydraulic bicycle brake systems. I have already made one video where I explained uh, um, with the more uh, the, the principle with the emphasis on the uh, braking force. That is how do, does the hydraulic brake system allow us to have a very strong force of brake pads against the brake disc with a very light pressure on the brake lever. And in this video I will explain some principles that I, for example, I use this, what I will explain today, when I want to shorten brake uh, hoses without needing to completely bleed the entire system. And generally, uh, in my opinion, for me at least, it's a lot easier when I understand how something works uh, when I, when I need to do something, especially in case of some uh, problems, complications or anything uh, not working properly, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot and pinpoint. And another reason for making these like uh, theoretical videos is that things always change, manufacturers always change models, they do slight or, or even more drastic uh, innovations or some other alterations. But if you understand the basic principle, how it works, you will more easily adapt your practice and you will understand why you're doing what you're doing, what you're told in the user manual or, or similar. So let's get on with this. I've made uh, <coughs> some instant coffee and I hope it will be all visible in the camera. This will be acting, uh, this is our brake fluid and this is our brake system, brake hose that has on one end uh, brake uh, uh, caliper and on the other hand it has brake levers. And so uh, the important thing first to realize the obvious one is that uh, there's air all around us and air creates a pressure of about one bar, more or less depending on the weather conditions and the altitude, but roughly that one, that much. And uh, that allows us to do some things with, uh, with these systems that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. For example, at least not, not as easily. Uh, for example, uh, if we uh, open both ends of a system, the fluid will flow through it without much problems. But if we close only one end, I will try to bring it closer to the camera and show what happens. Here, I've, I've closed one end of this. And as I insert it inside this fluid, you can see that the fluid does not enter the, the hose. Our, our hose is completely empty. However, the moment I release the pressure, the moment I open this, you can see the fluid entering. That's, that's the, the first thing to note. Another thing is that once this is full, if I close the top and take it out, the fluid stays until I release it then it flows out. So when we're working on hydraulic systems, bicycle, like bicycle brakes, hydraulic bicycle brakes, uh, it is always important to have these things in mind. So if you are trying to remove some air bubbles from the middle of your braking hose or, or somewhere in your braking calipers, it's no use to open uh, only one end depending on where you are what you are trying to do but generally most bleeding and pro and the processes for removing air removing trapped air are done by opening both ends and making sure that uh, the air can come out of the end but no further air can come in so it's usually required that you have some sort of syringe that is full of brake fluid or open uh, canister on top that is full of brake fluid. So the idea is to prevent the air from coming in, to allow it to come out, but to have both ends open so that the air can come out. <clears throat> if you have trapped air inside, it, it just won't work unless you have both ends open. Here, as you can see, this is our brake fluid and when I close both ends, it's not going anywhere, we cannot remove any, any air. But if I release one end, it starts flowing. Here we have two, two parts that have some liquid and this is air in the middle. And in order to 
do anything, I need to open at least one end. I need to open both ends or, or it won't move. Here we have an air bubble. It's moving up and down. There's not enough vacuum here, but in, in uh, brake systems, it's, it's difficult to get the air out just using, using this, unless you have some open canister. If it's all enclosed, you won't do much work. You need to open both ends and bleed the system. So uh, this is the, the basic principle and uh, it's, it, it comes in very handy when shortening brake hoses for one example, allowing you to, to do that without getting practically almost no air inside and to easily remove any air that does enter, but to minimize that as much as possible if you do it properly, if you make sure to pay attention what end you open, what end you keep closed and, and so on. So, uh, I'll make a video on that when I find the time and when the first bike with those that needs that operation done comes in. But uh, I think it's, it, was in, it was a good idea to make this video and explain the, the working principle. And that's it. Thank you for watching and cheers.